Hi, I'm Dr. Rob from More Than Anatomy, and in this module, we're gonna cover the knee joint. I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know about this fascinating joint of the body. Not only will I cover the bones, the ligaments, the muscles which both move and stabilize the joint, but I'll also share with you essential skills in how to assess someone's knee, both in a still or static position, as well as during movement. So how is the knee joint designed to move as we enter an asana and as we exit it. I'll also go over common conditions of the knee and how to treat those potentially using yoga as a therapy. I'm gonna give you lots of ideas in terms of which asana we might need to do more of, which we might need to modify, and those that we might need to completely avoid in certain conditions. By the end of this module, your understanding of the knee is going to be at a very high level. And I'm gonna teach you this using a very simple language whilst focusing on the most important things for you. So, with that all said and done, let's begin. We will start by learning the bones which form the knee. First of all, we have the femur here. It's the longest bone in the body. It runs from the hip down to the knee. At the front, at the very end of the femur, we have this bone here. That's your patella or kneecap. And then beneath those two bones, the tibia at the front. And on the outside, this much thinner bone, the fibula. Let's also consider the landmarks or parts of some of these bones. Now, on the inside of the knee here, we've got this structure. This is called the femoral condyle. On the inside of the knee, it's termed the medial femoral condyle. And then on the outside of the knee here, we've got the lateral femoral condyle. You can see they're curved in nature. They move with or articulate with this part of the called the tibial plateau, which is a relatively flat surface for these condyles to sit on and move with. Beneath the tibial plateau is the tibial tuberosity. The important patella tendon attaches to this. So we've got the big quadriceps muscles which come down, attach to the patella, and then via the patella tendon to the tibial tuberosity. There's one more landmark which I'll point out to you this part of the fibula here. It's not part of the knee joint proper. However, there are key ligaments and other tissues, including muscles, which do attach to it. It's called the fibula head. I'll come back to that structure a little bit later. So those are the main bones and the key landmarks of those. Often when we think about the knee, we consider it as being one joint, but actually it's made up of two separate joints or two articulations. The first is the tibiofemoral joint formed by the tibia, specifically the tibial plateau, articulating with the femoral condyles, tibiofemoral joint. And then we have the patellofemoral joint, and that's formed by the patella articulating with the femur specifically a groove through here, which is called the femoral trochlear. Both of those joints are synovial. So the synovial joints. And synovial joints are something that we we'll cover in great detail in the bone and joint module. So let's look at movements of the tibiofemoral joint. The primary motions possible are flexion and extension. There are also secondary movements. 
both internal rotation of the tibia in relation to the femur and external rotation of the tibia. Rotation is only possible once the knee is bent, but also rotation is required to bend the knee. And this is something that many people are not always familiar with. So when the leg is straight and fully extended, as an energy saving mechanism, the knee is nice and locked, so the bone surfaces fit well together at this point. The tissues are tight. It means that the muscles don't have to work so hard to maintain a standing position. To get out of that lock position, we actually need a little bit of internal rotation to loosen the knee, unlock it, and then make flexion more possible. When we come back into extension, the reverse happens. We then get a little bit of external rotation back to neutral, and the leg gets extended and locked once more. So once we bend the knee, rotation becomes easier. So now when we get to between 30 and 90 degrees, we can get up to 25 degrees on average of internal rotation and on average about 45 degrees of external rotation. We'll come back to that particular point a little bit later because rotational movements of the knee are not always thought about and we should consider that quite strongly in terms of how it's going to affect the health of the knee. Let's take a more detailed look at the patellofemoral joint. Now if I slide the patella out of the way, it reveals this groove, the femoral trochlea. And the underside of the patella simply sits within that groove and slides through it as we move or bend the knee. So as I enter flexion, and then as I return back to extension, you can see the movement of the patella. Now both of these surfaces are lined with articular cartilage, more specifically hyaline cartilage. This is a synovial joint. The knee, like all joints of the body, relies heavily on ligaments to help stabilize the joint, to keep the connecting bones in the right position. Within and around the knee, there are four that we need to learn. The first two are the collateral ligaments. So on the inside of the knee, we have the medial collateral ligament running from the femur down to the tibia. And on the outside of the knee, we have the lateral collateral ligament that runs from the femur to the fibular head. These two ligaments primarily resist adduction of the knee and abduction of the knee, or valgus or varus stresses. These are unwanted movements of the knee. The knee joint is not designed to allow these, so we need a lot of resistance to prevent them. These two ligaments do a very good job of that. They also, however, help resist rotation. So this type of movement, over rotating the knee, we've seen already that we need rotation. Rotation is a normal part of the knee joint design and mechanics, but we don't want too much. These ligaments again help resist that. And lastly, they help prevent both forward movement of the femur in relation to the tibia and backward movement of the femur in relation to the tibia. So all in all, they're providing a lot of stability to the knee. We also have the cruciate ligaments. We have the anterior cruciate and the posterior cruciate ligament. The anterior cruciate ligament, you can see on this image, is highlighted as green and the posterior as blue. Sometimes these ligaments are abbreviated to the ACL and the PCL, so anterior cruciate ligament, posterior cruciate ligament. You'll see that the anterior cruciate ligament attaches to the front of the tibia and then goes to the back of the femur, whilst the posterior cruciate ligament attaches to the back of the tibia and then goes pretty much straight up and attaches to the femur. Now, the placement and design of the anterior cruciate ligament 
helps resist this movement, a forward translation of the tibia in relation to the femur, whereas the posterior cruciate ligament has the reverse role. It helps prevent the tibia moving backward in relation to the femur. Those two ligaments can also help resist rotation, as well as to some extent these um, adduction and abduction movements. So these are the four key ligaments of the knee. But now we're gonna look a little bit more closely at the function of those ligaments during movement, particularly the ACL and the PCL. So think about this, when we're standing upright, the upper body weight and gravity are acting straight through the femur pretty much, through the tibia, they're compressing into the ground, which sends a force back through the leg and compresses the knee. That actually helps to stabilize the joint. That compression is very useful for knee stability. As we start to bend the knee, however, the forces start to change. We still got compression, but the forces can actually cause a misalignment either in this way or this way. So you can move forward the femur or backward. This is where the cruciate ligaments come in to try and prevent that type of movement. So when we start to bend the knee in the early stages, the forces are such that a separation in this way become quite possible and the anterior cruciate ligament has to prevent it. However, as we bend the knee further around here, the forces change completely the knee and now the posterior cruciate ligament has to try and prevent this movement because the forces are trying to send the femur forward in relation to the tibia. So different degrees of knee flexion challenge the ligaments in different ways. Therefore, sending the knee joint through a full range of motion whilst weight bearing is very beneficial for the joint to help not only strengthen the muscles, but also to stimulate the ligaments to maintain their strength and their integrity. The issue arises, however, when one of those or both of those ligaments are injured. It means that movements are less stable and we can then injure other structures, for example, the meniscus. For you to understand this even more deeply, I want you to watch this short video of me testing someone with a fully ruptured anterior cruciate ligament so you can appreciate the level of instability that can occur at the knee with this type of injury. So the individual is lying on their back, this is their femur here, and this is their tibia. I'm clasping around the back of the knee, and in a moment I'm going to try and draw the tibia forward in relation to the femur. In a healthy knee, there will be very little movement between the two bones. Essentially, I'm testing the integrity of the anterior cruciate ligament. Now, as I play the video, I want you to keep your eyes right around here. Can you see that large movement? And again, there. That is a very unstable knee because of that ACL tear. In a healthy knee, that would not be seen. The two bones would move very little indeed. Now the issue we have when the anterior cruciate ligament is fully ruptured is that the two ends which are now separated aren't able to reconnect themselves and create a bond. It means that the level of instability that we just saw can be permanent. The issue in the short and long term is that this excessive motion we now have at the joint can lead to injuring other structures, in particular the meniscus or the hyaline cartilage within the joint. That needs to be avoided. Now, often a case like this will require a reconstruction, so a surgical option where they go in and replace the old ligament with another tissue. That usually solves things pretty well. It's never quite perfect. It will never be quite the same again. The knee will move slightly differently than before. 
This is always pretty much required for someone who wants to play sports to a high level. You just need a lot of control in that knee to be able to make fast running movements, changes of directions. If the individual is sedentary and has a low level of instability, probably lesser than we just saw, it can be possible to avoid surgery purely by strengthening the leg and building up the control of the leg. This is quite specialist, however, and I would generally advise um, any individual to go and see someone who is properly trained in this area. The average yoga therapist is probably not well equipped to deal with this type of problem. Just speaking briefly about the posterior cruciate ligament, this is much stronger. The other thing with the PCL is that once it's fully ruptured, once the two ends are, are separated, it can actually spontaneously heal. It means that if you are patient with it, over time the ligament can rejoin and the problem be resolved. In some individuals, even if that doesn't happen, they have no issue whatsoever. Whilst in others, it can be very problematic. So that gives you an idea of how to perhaps think about those injuries. As I said, keep in mind that the anterior cruciate ligament is very complex. It doesn't heal when it's fully ruptured and probably better left to the specialist to deal with. Perhaps you can work in conjunction with them and focus on other areas for that individual rather than just the knee.